Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks, and in today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate three methods that will help you to identify and then either delete or edit duplicate records that exist in an Excel data sheet. All right, let's take a example over here. Let's just pretend that a customer has sent me a copy of an invoice register. He called me up ahead of time to say, as you can see, Danny, my data entry clerk inadvertently entered in duplicate invoice numbers for the customers. I want to be able to, number one, highlight all of those cells so I can make the decision whether I want to edit them by assigning a different uh, invoice number or delete the record. So in this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate three methods for doing this. Circle invalid data, which will work if you have applied data validation. So in this case, after the customer sent me this invoice register, I applied data validation to these cells. Now I can use the data validation circle invalid data. So you see I have now a red circle around all of the invoices where there is a duplicate value. Of course I sorted the invoice register in, in the sequence in column A, ascending. The second method that we can use is to remove the duplicates command. Now the remove duplicates command was added in Excel 2007 and it's quite powerful however I caution you that it can also be very destructive. So when we work with the remove duplicates command, I recommend that you work with a copy of the data. It will take some time to get used to it and you don't want to destroy the data that you're starting with. The third method is conditional formatting and honestly I think that this is the best way to go. In Excel 2007, Excel 2010, conditional formatting has been remarkably improved. So in this case, what I want to do is select the cells to which I want to apply conditional formatting, the invoice numbers, come over to the Home tab of the ribbon, choose conditional formatting, and then from the flyout menu for highlight cell rules, choose duplicate values. Now, behind the scenes, Excel has already written the necessary formulas, which is a major improvement. And notice that I can also choose to have conditional formatting applied to the um, duplicate sales or to the unique value. So if I leave it for the uh, duplicate uh, invoices, then I can choose the formatting when the condition is true, that it is a duplicate value. So you see that's a very, very uh, incredible improvement over conditional formatting in Excel 2003, where when we apply conditional formatting, we're first required to actually write the formula. So select the cells to which you want to apply conditional formatting from the Format menu, choose Conditional Formatting, and then make sure you choose Formula Is. In this case, we're going to use the count if function. Now when I go back and show you data validation, we're going to use a similar method. We're going to again use a formula, but not any old formula. It's a formula that will return either true or false. In conditional formatting, when you write the formula and the result is true, then the formatting that you uh, choose to apply when the condition answers true will appear in the cell. So in this case, count if looking in this range of cells to find the invoice number and if there are more, if there is more than one instance of that invoice number, then the condition answers true and we apply this formatting automatically. So I think you'll agree that if you're using Excel 2007 that the conditional formatting is much easier to use. All right, let's go back in order. Let's go back and I want to show you how you can use the circle invalid data. This will only work if you have applied data validation. So in this case, let's first go back and remove the conditional formatting. Select the cells that have conditional formatting applied to it, Home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting, and what I want to do is I want to clear the rule from the selected cells. Now in this case, remember that the customer sent me this invoice register ahead of time which had duplicate values in there. So I applied the data validation 
after the fact. When I apply data validation after the fact, it is not going to kick out existing data. However, we can use, as I showed you, we can use the circle in valid data combined with data validation to see which cells do not meet the rule that we established for data validation. So what actually is the rule? Let's go in and take a look. Well, all we have to do is look at one cell for right now. So data tab on the ribbon, data validation to open up the data validation dialog box. In this case on the settings tab, notice that in the drop down for allow that I chose custom. When you choose custom, that means that you can write a formula. Now again, as I showed you with conditional formatting, the formula that we write in data validation must return true. So the result must be true. In other words, count if, count inside this range of cells, the cells that are in column A. What we want to look for are the instances of the invoice number. So our first invoice number is up here in cell A2. The important element, the gotcha step here to turn this into a true or false result is to put in there equals one. All right, let me show you over here. So I have written over here the count if, and let me remove the equal one. So when I say count if, look inside this range, all of the cells in column A. You want to look for the criteria which is going to be the invoice number. And looking inside column A, what's the result? There are two instances of 101 as the invoice number. So data validation, what we want to do in here is we want to add in there equals one. We want only one instance. We want to have unique numbers for the invoice number. So now we get a false. That's why when we come back here and apply the data validation circle invalid data that we have this circle because there are two instances in here. So if I go through in this cell and let's make it 1111 you see now the circle disappears and you see that I only have one value of invoice 101. Likewise come down here and let's change this invoice number to be 5555 and now you see the circle goes away because when I drag down this formula in this case for that cell the answer is true. There is only one instance of this invoice. There is only one instance of this invoice. So you see the circling of the invalid. The key here is it must work with data validation and it's best when you apply data validation to existing data so that you can spot those cells in the range that do not meet the rule. All right, now let me move over here to remove the duplicates. As I mentioned, this is powerful, but it's also potentially destructive. So I like to work with a copy. I selected the cells from the invoice field and the customer field. Copy them, and I'm going to paste them over here. Let's just widen the column, and let me change the focus over here, and let's see how this works. Select a single cell in the data set. Come over here to the data tab on the ribbon. And again, remember, this will only work in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. Remove the duplicates. In the dialog box that opens up, notice that it has identified my data set as having clearly defined data headers. And also notice that both fields are in the dialog box and both are checked. Now, I guarantee that if I hit OK, it's going to return there are no duplicates. Well, you're asking, well, wait a minute, you've got duplicate invoices. How can that happen? Let's bring this dialog box up again. Remove duplicates. You see, in this case, uh, let me just move this down a little bit. With uh, invoice 108, 108 here, you see what we're looking for is we're looking for duplicates where both uh, fields have the same information. So 108 in California produce is a different result than 108 Delta Foods. Now, in this case, if I remove the customer field, it's going to look in one field only, the invoice number. But remember, this is destructive. So the goal here will be to remove one of these invoice 108s. But look what happens. 
three duplicate values were found and removed. It didn't tell me. It didn't give me a preview. It didn't highlight those rows or those records where it was going to delete. It just goes ahead and deletes it. So if you did not get the result that you wanted, uh, that you were expecting, make sure you use the keyboard shortcut Control Z to undo that action, or click the Undo button over there. So you see why it's important to work with a copy of the data. Now again, understand that when you delete duplicate records, what the computer may interpret as duplicate may not in fact be an actual duplicate. So really, if you look at this, the address is the same. Obviously, I've misspelled or, or, or put variations on the spellings for the address, but it really is the same record. What I really need to have is more uh, ability to control what gets put in there. So in fact, if I make a copy of this last record, highlight it, control C, control V to make a copy. Now, in fact, these two records are duplicates. So if I come in here and say remove duplicates and I have all of the fields selected. So it's going to look and say if every one of the fields is identical to another record, then go ahead and delete one of them. So there, in fact, it did delete properly. But as you can see, what we want to do is we want to be able to have a way that we can highlight the values. We want to be able to identify the potential records to delete before we actually have the computer delete them. So circle invalid data works when you have applied data validation. It's a great way to go through and be able to spot those records and then either edit them or delete them remove duplicates, powerful but possibly destructive, and conditional formatting, and especially in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, conditional formatting has been greatly improved. All you have to do is select the cells that you wish to apply conditional formatting to, and in this case, to spot the duplicates, it's from the Highlight Cells rule, duplicate values, and decide whether you want to highlight with formatting the duplicate records or the unique records and what kind of formatting that you wish to apply. You don't have to write the formula. So there you've seen some really terrific tools. Three methods that you can use to uh, highlight and then delete the records. And it's typical of the tips that I offer on my DVD, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007. And I will look for you in the next lesson.